Hello, how's it going? Today I have a story for you, and it ends up being about this rabbit hole I went down, and also about uh, journalism and editing and web content. And it all starts with this March 2019 newsletter that I read, and it's a really inspiring story about Nichelle Nichols, who is the actress who played Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek back in the early days. And she was about to quit after one season, and she happened to run into Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at a fundraiser, and he said, no, no, you can't quit uh, because your role is not a black role, not a female role. He said, you have changed the face of television forever. And so she said, okay, fine, and she kept that role and en ended up being Lieutenant Uhura for the next 40 years in, in several different uh, seasons and movies. So it's an inspiring story, and I'll leave the link uh, down below in the description. But what got me started on this rabbit hole was an interesting footnote about where the name Uhura came from. And it tells in this footnote, it quotes a Wall Street Journal interview where Nichols said, I walked into the interview with this magnificent treatise on Africa by Ruark called Uhuru, which is Swahili for freedom. Jean, meaning Jean Roddenberry, uh, said he really liked the name of that book and wanted to use the title as a first name. I said, why don't you do an alliteration of the name Uhuru and soften the N and make it Uhura? He said, you are Uhura and that belongs to you. Again, an interesting story. But wait a minute, why did she mean soften the letter N? I mean, her name is Nichelle instead of Michelle, but that's, that can't be the N she was talking about. If you look in Uhuru, it doesn't have any N in there. Ah, forget it, so I went on to other things. But then it kept bugging me, and I'm, I was curious. So I said, you know what, I'm going to look this up, starting down the rabbit hole, you see. And I looked up other sites and found the same thing, um, but with no explanation about where this N came from. Where did this letter N came, come from? In fact, they're pretty much the same copy-pasted anecdote across all of these different articles and blog posts. Uh, which brings up a question, would a major newspaper do this? I mean, he did quote Wall Street Journal. So I actually went to the Wall Street Journal site, saw the first two paragraphs, and then I couldn't read the rest of it because it was behind a paywall. Um, by the way, later I found the uh, full thing, and I'll tell you what I found in a minute. But finally, I broadened my search, and I found a different interview where she tells the story again to a different person um, and says it slightly different. And this is the end of the mystery. This is what she said in this interview. He, Gene Roddenberry, says, It sounds too harsh for a female. I said, well, why don't you do an alliteration of it, soften the end with an A, and it'll be Uhura. Ah, makes so much more sense. She wasn't saying the N, but the end. So that brings up a couple other new questions. Um, where did this mistake come from? Um, so obviously it seems like somebody was transcribing a spoken a transcript of, of an interview and said soften the end instead of soften the end and so that makes sense but the interesting question is why did nobody notice and why did this get copy and pasted over dozens of blog and other articles without anybody ever sort of fact checking or asking that same question like what is it why does it say n that's sort of the bigger question and I've heard it said that the web doesn't need more authors or writers it needs more editors both in the sense of improving content and making sure mistakes like this don't happen, and in the sense of, of highlighting interesting uh, content to bring to a set of viewers. Um, now, I know we do uh, rely on algorithms to do that quite a bit. In fact, we probably do that too much. And yes, I know that human editors are biased, but also I think uh, the algorithms end up being biased too. But maybe that's a different topic for a different day. Um, go read uh, the book by Eli Pariser called Filter Bubble if you're interested in that topic. Okay, so back to that Wall Street Journal article. Uh, later on, I finally did find a way to find that article, and I saw the original source. And guess what? It had the same story. It said soften the N, as in letter N. But it wasn't a Wall Street Journal print article. It was just one of their blog articles. And so I wonder if they would have a different standard for something that's in print. Um, for example, the New York Times, I know for sure that they wouldn't have let something like that through because somebody would have read it and said, wait, that doesn't make sense, and they would have taken it out or tracked it down. Okay, so now that we've solved that, here's another question. Who actually came up with the new spelling? 
Now, in both versions I just told you, Nichols herself says that she suggested changing the name, so she did it, right? But wait, Wikipedia says something slightly different. When the producer explained to Roddenberry what the word Uhuru meant, he changed it to Uhura and adopted it as the character's name. So he changed it. Oh, wait a minute, there's a footnote here. Let's see where they got that from. It actually quotes a book from 1997 that says this, Roddenberry took the word, changed it to Uhura, and gave it to his discovery. Discovery meaning the new actress he had found. So that brings up a question of how do you know what is the truth in situations like this, or is it even discoverable, and what do you do if you have different sources saying different things? Um, was it a book that was written in 1997, maybe 30 years after the event happened? Or Nichols herself, she was there, but maybe she wasn't remembering quite as well because it had been 40 years when she gave the interview. Uh, maybe she isn't correctly remembering. Or I suppose you could make a case that both are true, that she invented it, but Roddenberry changed the name. And so there's a way of reading all of those to say that they're all true. They're both technically correct, both ways of saying it. I'm actually inclined to believe that Michelle Nichols herself, the actress, came up with the name. And part of the reason is because of this interview. I'll play you a clip right here. And he took me to lunch at Maribel's, right around the corner where everybody goes. And I think that's the name of it. He says, and I said, oh, yeah. And so he says, but it sounds too harsh for female. And I want, I have a... And so while he's talking, I picked up my uh, champagne or glass of wine or whatever it was and trying to be sophisticated again. I said, well, why don't you do an alliteration of it and soften the end with an A and it'll be Uhura. And he put his down and he looked at me. He said, that's it. That's your name. You named it. It's yours. <laughs> Notice how she includes specific details, where the restaurant was, uh, what she was drinking, and that actually suggests that she remembers it well and that her story is the definitive true story. Um, so that's the second mystery solved. Although, and maybe this is the final twist to the story, unfortunately, now she suffers from dementia, and maybe even when giving the interview, it seems like she might not have been remembering things as clearly as she could have been, and it was 40, 45 years after the fact. Finally, one other tidbit I want to mention. Interviews like this are interesting, and I think there would be a big audience for that, so I was really surprised to see that it only has about 1,600 views. Uh, this was produced by the Television Academy Foundation, or the people who do the Emmys. And so it brings up the question, how come more people haven't seen this? Uh, how does good content like this get to people? I think there would be a lot of uh, Star Trek fans who would be really interested to see this interview of Nichelle Nichols, uh, but only 1,600 people have seen it. And I think the answer there, again, is editors. We need good editors to bring to light good content, and hopefully that would make a better web. Okay, so there's the story, and I have a question for you, actually, and this is why I'm posting it here on this uh, Matthews Adventures channel, because I'm actually curious what you think. Do you think this is an interesting enough story that if I tighten it up some and make it more concise and more uh, produced, I wonder if it would be an interesting video to put on my main channel? Meanwhile, I thought you guys would be interested. Uh, I think it's an interesting story. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I appreciate any comments you have. Have a good day. Take it easy.